I just want to wish the greatest special teams coordinator in America a happy birthday to Pete Limbo. And with that, I'll uh, open it up to any questions. And the first question goes to David Cloninger. How's it going, Eric? Good to see you again. Um, you know, I, I realize that's kind of a general broad question, but how badly did you want this spot on staff just to be somehow involved with this coaching staff? I mean, it was always a dream, David, for a long time. I'll put it probably about 10 years. Uh, but it was something that I knew had to happen organically and naturally with the right person. Um, I didn't think there was a high percentage chance it would ever happen, but I always said, you know what, I'm going to pursue it. If something comes of it, then, you know, my wife and I kind of felt like it was God's plan, honestly. And, uh, and to be able to be here and represent this university that I love so much in, in the city of Columbia uh, and so many former players is just very meaningful to me. And I'm very grateful to Shane Beamer for, for taking a chance on a guy like me and, and bringing him on staff. Rick Henry. Hey, Eric, good to see you today. Uh, I was just wondering, do any um, other members of the staff, uh, knowing your history with the University of South Carolina, do they uh, come to you and ask you about your experiences, maybe like what's worked here before, what hasn't worked? Uh, or or do, is it that something that you just freely offer up without even being asked? Well, I think more, Rick, just about life stuff, you know, neighborhoods to look at, schools to look at, and things of that nature. Uh, we certainly have talked about, you know, some of the history of the program where it comes up organically, but nothing particular. Hey, I'm a uh, as far as your guys, uh, the last few practices, what have you seen from them uh, on the field and what, what are your overall impressions there? Yeah, I'm excited about this group of great tight ends. I think it's a diverse group in terms of their skill set. Uh, Nick Muse has been outstanding uh, this spring. He's an absolute professional in everything that he does. He's the first guy in the building. He knows pretty much everybody's positions in this offense probably better than I do. Um, and he does all the little things right. There's everything you want in a guy that you coach. Uh, Nick does that, and he sets the example for the entire room. Uh, Pat Reedy uh, is a, another senior that is a walk-on guy and uh, gives a lot of effort and gives us some size down there. Uh, EJ Jenkins is a guy that's a, a hybrid type of guy that we're still figuring out exactly how we want to use him, but he's got a lot of weapons. He's a very long guy. He's pushing 6'8". I think he's got a wingspan of something about 82 inches. But he can really run, um, and he's a very uh, eager guy in terms of learning, very humble. Uh, so I, I love EJ. He's a great kid. Uh, Key Mullins brings a kind of speed factor on, on the perimeter. Uh, he's still got to get a little more confidence in blocking, but it's something that he's working on and improving. Uh, Jaheim Bell is an outstanding athlete. Again, a guy you can use in multiple ways. He's one of the strongest guys on the team. Um, and he can carry the football. He can block on the perimeter. He can run routes. He can do almost everything. Uh, Trey Kenyon has had a fantastic spring. Uh, he's really coming around, and he understands the offense on a high level. He brings something in the running game and the passing game. He's kind of the all-around guy. Uh, Eric Shaw is a young guy. He's long. Uh, he's got to get a little bit thicker and get in the weight room, but he flashes and at times running routes. Uh, Jesse Sanders is a guy that's in our room now, too. He's coming off an ACL injury, hurt his knee the same day that Marshawn did. Wonderful human being. Uh, and brings a great presence and spirit to our room. And uh, Dave Adams is a walk-on that recently joined us as well, and he's learning right now. But a great group of young men more than anything. And, uh, and again, they bring a very diverse skill set to our, to our room and to our offense. Colin Taylor. Yeah, Eric, now that you've been in the offense now for a little bit and gotten a chance to see what it's like through spring, what are your impressions of it and how the tight ends are kind of going to be used? Well, we'll see. You know, uh, we're not in a game plan yet. We're, we're utilizing a lot of different uh, schemes, whether it be in the running game or the passing game. But uh, knowing Coach Sat and how many former tight ends coaches are on this staff, I can tell you that they're going to be utilized. And particularly when you have a, a group of guys that, again, offer so many different skill sets, uh, I'm excited to see all the different ways we can use the combinations of these guys in the future. But I feel confident in saying that tight ends are going to be a major part of this offense. Josh Kendall. Hang on. All right. I got to hit all the buttons. That takes a while. Josh. Eric, you're. How you doing? Good. You are a culture guy, my, is my understanding. What is your sense of the type of culture and vibe or whatever the word is you might use? Y'all are trying to build there, and how are you trying to do it? 
Well, I think I think it's going really well, Josh. To be honest with you, uh, I, I see a lightness and, and a lot of fun that's happening in the building, and that starts with Coach Beamer. Uh, that's something that he's very passionate for, and he has he's really got a thought out plan and how to do that. I think Luke Day is another guy that's had a, a, a unbelievable impact on this program. He has his hands on these guys every single day, um, and the things that he's doing in the weight room, I've never heard of anybody in the country doing. And these guys are, are responding in a very positive manner. Uh, I love it that we're in there watching film the other day, and there's 20 guys in the office with us on the offense just watching tape. And we're cutting up, and we're laughing, and we're evaluating things. And Coach Sat does a great job of keeping things light. Um, and, but these guys are passionate about learning. And so I think at the end of the day, you know, culture is what you fall back on when things are hard. And we got to have that foundation first. And Coach Beamer is adamant that that be the case. And, and guys like Luke Day and Derek Moore and Connor Shaw, uh, not to mention the wonderful staff that he's put together, um, are really, I think, uh, enforcing that at every point in time. Go back to Rick Henry. Eric, what was more exciting for you, taking the uh, practice field the first time as a player for the Gamecocks or the first time as a coach? I'd say as a coach, Rick, because when you're older, you're a little wiser and you know what you're getting into. Um, what a dream it was for me. I think when I was 18, 19 years old and on that practice field for the first time, I was more scared than anything. Uh, so uh, it was, it's been surreal. You know, there's probably one or two times a week I look around the office and, and say, OK, I, this is happening. I'm here. This is, this is incredible. So uh, it's an opportunity I don't take lightly, and I'm very grateful for it. Hill. You mentioned Jaheim uh, running the ball a little bit. If you could maybe expand a little bit on that. I obviously can't probably give away too much, but what, what has he added there and, and what could he potentially add in, in addition to some of the other things that, that y'all feel like he can do within the offense? He's just a guy you can move him around so much with a variety of motions that you can, you know, hand him the ball here and there. Um, so, again, he's a very strong individual. I think he squats close to 600 pounds or something insane like that. Um, and he's a very good athlete on the perimeter, can run routes, can block, can carry the ball. Um, and, and so he's a guy that we, we can see having the potential of utilizing a lot this coming fall. John Del Bianco. Eric, just how unique is EJ Jenkins and you know his, his body, his build, and, and what he's able to do on a football field? Very unique. Uh, again, he's probably around six, seven and a half. He's got long arms, and he can really run. Um, and he is just absorbing as much knowledge as possible right now, not just as a tight end and blocking in C-gap areas, but also getting with Coach Stepp sometimes and myself and route running and some of the tricks and, and, and crafts that, that Justin does such a good job of teaching out there. He's really trying to um, understand and embrace all of that at one time, and, and, and he has improved dramatically within four or five practices. And uh, I, I see as a guy that I'm looking forward to watching in the fall. He's certainly – uh, a matchup issue for guys because because of his length. Rick, Rick Henry. Eric, are you aware that Dutch Fork High is starting a um, Hall of Fame? Uh, I think I heard about that. It's not just for um, athletics. It's for um, graduates that have been outstanding in all types of fields. And um, since you're aware of it, do you expect to be a member of the inaugural class? I wouldn't expect that, Rick. Uh, that'd be an honor, of course, but I'd hope my dad would be a, a member of that inaugural class, to be honest with you. Got anybody you would uh, nominate besides your dad? I mean, Dustin Johnson's had a decent career. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's on the list. I think so. Uh, it's, it's awesome. We've had a lot of uh, really successful alumni come from Dutch Fork High School. I mean, Dustin's just one of many. I can think of so many that have gone on to play in college and in the pros. Um, and so it's neat to be a part of that community. Colin Taylor. Eric, you've obviously been on the other end of recruiting for a little bit with having your guys at Hammond being recruited. Now that you're on the other side and you're recruiting guys to South Carolina, how's that gone? And what are some things that you've maybe learned over the last few months as you've gotten into this side of it? No, you know, I've really enjoyed recruiting. I think at the end of the day, it's just getting to know young men for who they are understanding you know, what motivates them, what inspires them, trying to develop, a, I would hope, an authentic relationship with them. I think the one thing, Colin, that I feel like I have an advantage is that I don't sell anything. You know, I'm at a school that I love. I'm in a town that I lived in my whole life. 
my my grandma went to South Carolina. My my two of my brothers, my mom and my dad, and my wife. And so when I talk about it, they hear the authenticity in my voice and how much I truly love this place because I believe in it and I believe that we have great days ahead. And uh, and hopefully that's a, a good tool for me to use in terms of recruiting. So I, I don't even like to call it recruiting. I like it to call it you know building relationships with people. John Dell. Eric, you can't leave this call without talking about some of your Hammond guys. Just what kind of growth have you seen from the likes of Jordan and, and Boogie and and the other uh, Fabian Goodman and Bradley Dunn? Yeah, it's fun to run into these guys in the building, and, and I'll give, I'm going to give Birch a hard time because I think Pat Reedy got the best of them in a drill the other day, and it's an old Hammond Cardinal Newman matchup. So, and now that I'm you know coaching the the Reedy side of things, you know I just give Jordan a hard time that he won, but. Uh, no, I, you can see it in both of these guys that are on the D-line, uh, uh, what a year does and the comfort level that they have, Just not just on the field but in the building, being a SEC football player. They're wonderful young men. They come from great families, and, and it's really cool to see that. I think Fabian Goodman has done a nice job as a serviceable corner out there. Uh, right now we're thin, and we need everybody we can get, and, and he's doing a nice job over there at corner. And, uh, and Bradley Dunn, I'd love to see him in, a, in a more of a fullback role at times, but uh, he's trying his best, and, uh, and, I, and I love seeing him in the building. Thank you.